Saying that a Blizzard game is destined for success is largely unambiguous at this stage. Aside from Activision Blizzard being one of the largest pub developers in the industry right now, with a marketing budget that will undoubtedly see the Warcraft logo projected onto the moon as soon as next week, they also have some of the most talented and creative in-house developers in the world working for them right now. To see solid evidence of this, you need look no further than Overwatch. The FPS genre has been nothing if not a little flaccid these past few years. Oh sure, we've had some interesting shooters crop up here and there, even some great ones, but few of them can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the sheer creativity and excessive polish I've seen from Overwatch so far. There are so many reasons why this game in particular gets so much right, but the most important and ultimately entertaining aspect of its design is strangely one of the most controversial buzzwords in the industry right now, accessibility. Accessible? Come on Chris, it's a MOBA, none of them are accessible when you first start. Well, technically it isn't really a MOBA. Well, actually I suppose technically it is when you take the term literally, but it's really nothing like the lol or dota likes we've seen flourish, and often flop, in recent years. After all, Blizzard already have their own MOBA in Heroes of the Storm. Overwatch shares very little with that genre of game in general. It may take inspiration from a few central gameplay mechanics, but that's really it. So. What exactly is Overwatch then if it's not a MOBA? If you've seen Zero Gameplay and just heard people talking about it, I wouldn't blame you for being confused. People have seriously overcomplicated what is essentially a very simple set of gameplay mechanics to understand. There are 21 playable characters. These are split into role classes, your support and healer characters for instance. All characters have their own unique set of skills that can be utilised in very distinct ways, regardless of whether or not they might be in the same role class. Unlike MOBAs, there's no levelling up during matches at all. Each character's abilities and general attributes are set in stone. Each character also has a very powerful ultimate ability. This can be something as simple as Mercy's ability to resurrect a fallen ally, or Soldier 76's aimbot mode. Each team benefits greatly from having a varied class lineup that contains at least one character from each of the main class roles. Okay, so maybe it is a little complicated when it's blurted out to you like that, but it's really very simple and easy to understand when you sit down to play it. As I said earlier, it's just accessible. This is partly down to its exquisite UI. Seriously guys, this user interface is one of the best I've ever seen. It's just so simple and refined. Everything from the character selection screen to the end of the match score roundup is so easy to understand. Then there's the gameplay in and of itself. Team Fortress 2 is undoubtedly the most apt comparison to be made here. Both games are simultaneously incredibly easy to understand whilst being extremely well layered. Though Overwatch is slightly more complex in that it has active skills for each character, it's principally the same thing once you know what your role is or isn't as a character. Both games share similar learning curves in that if you've played an FPS before, you'll do fine on your own but the real curve is in the teamwork. Having two of the same character on one team can sometimes be detrimental to your objective as a whole. Overwatch in particular relies on you to be as observant of the enemy team as you should be of your own. The real difficulty comes in knowing the true counterplays for each class. Case in point, one character myself and other players frequently seemed to struggle against was Bastion, a character that can turn into a stationary turret with what seemed like excessive amounts of armour that dealt out extreme amounts of damage to anyone at almost any range. Initially, I thought it was a serious imbalance that needed to be addressed. Then a friend of mine told me that Roadhog's hookshot can bring him out of sentry mode and remove his armour. As soon as I knew that, it was just a case of getting into the hookshot's effective range and going to town on him. Just to address something else, a lot of people have been comparing this game to Battleborn, which is somewhat fair. Battleborn really does borrow heavily from MOBAs, however. You level up during matches, and the crux of a great playstyle often revolves around memorising percentages as much as anything else. Whilst it's totally subjective, and I would never say that one is objectively better than the other, I do find Overwatch's style to be so much more elegant and dynamic when compared to Battleborn's. Again, it feels a lot more accessible without sacrificing depth. The most beautiful thing about the game is that, like TF2 before it, it's chock full of variables. Though that particular strategy I mentioned earlier worked most of the time, all it takes is a Reinhardt or a Winston to pop a shield around a Bastion and your efforts would be for naught. This is where working as a team really, really matters. Coordinating your attacks and playing off each other's skills and ultimates is what will win you games as well as being the most fun. And that's really what Overwatch is for me. Pure, unadulterated fun. Even when I was playing bad, I was still really enjoying myself. This is what sets it apart, most of all, from its MOBA comparisons. I could never get into League of Legends or Dota simply because the communities were so incredibly toxic and ferocious. 
Whilst I can't say that 100% of my games were asshole free, for a competitive shooter that I was playing on PC, the most noob intolerant platform of the lot, I was amazed that the insults were so few and far between. So, is it worth buying on release date? As always, I implore you to please wait for reviews to start dropping so you can make a genuinely informed decision on whether or not the final build of the game is going to be worth your money. But taking on the open beta alone, I'd say, yeah, it's absolutely worth your cash. Whilst the full game will offer very little more than what was available in the beta, a uh, competitive mode and the ability to buy crates containing cosmetic items as far as I'm aware, I still think there's enough variety in the map and character design to keep you going for hours and hours. There isn't an extensive list of modes available, there's basically three that you can play at launch with the promise of more further down the line, but to be honest, they're the only ones I would have played regardless. It is unfortunate there isn't a playable campaign mode however. With such aesthetically diverse and stunning characters, it'd be great to get some background story in game, but hey ho, that may very well be coming too. So yeah, Overwatch is pretty damn fucking good.